Okay. <clears throat> Kelly Reed. Wonder if this coming uh, recession will be called to full employment recession. Huh. Who knows? Uh, find out next time when the Fed fucks around. Find out. Yeah, it's weird. Like they're expecting uh, a little more, a little more, a little more downturn on the jobs numbers, and we added three hundred and something thousand jobs, but wages didn't go up with that addition. And so one of the the theories is that people got laid off from good paying jobs and then went out and got terrible jobs in the service sector. So they might have been an architect got laid off and now they're waiting tables, that type of thing. They might've been a school teacher, got laid off and now they're like laying floors somewhere. Um, so so it's full employment, but the high paying jobs are vanishing and being replaced. Those people are moving into less well-paying jobs or uh, getting multiple jobs. So you can be like, oh, well, all these roles are being filled, but there's, but you know, half the employees are working two or more jobs at the same time. So, uh, is that really full employment or is that like too much employment? Whereas if you just pay a living wage of those jobs, then, you know, people only need one job and they could chill out and they could spend their money. And then, you know, the economy would do better. <sighs> Kelly Reed, Rosenberg has been vocal about us recession concerns saying an economic downturn has arrived, but nobody's noticed. Yeah. I mean, the, the real estate market alone is enough to point to that. Uh, home prices are dropping in multiple markets across country. Uh, commercial real estate's worthless. Hotels are now starting to go under. Um, it's, it's coming. There's not, people don't have discretionary income. And now you're going to have a quarter of the population losing another 400 to $1,000 a month in discretionary income to pay back student loans. And it's just going to be a, just like a one, two that that's going to hit everybody all at once. And you're going to see, Vacations dry up, car purchases dry up. Uh, it's consumer debt go up. It's people have to like put things on a credit card, hoping that there's a there's a payday somewhere. Um, yeah, the the Biden admin should never have negotiated away the the student debt thing. They should have just make it go in perpetuity. Be like, you know what? I can't cancel it, so we're just gonna keep halting it. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, there's a, there's a lawsuit about the $20,000 in forgiveness, 10 to $20,000 forgiveness that the state of Missouri is suing the government over. And it turns out they may not have legal standing because there is money that was owed to the company that's based in Missouri. That's why they're suing. And they're claiming, oh, we're going to lose this much money every year if, if you forgive student loans. And it turns out that they've not even bothering to go after delinquent payers previously. And there's like hundreds of millions of dollars in delinquent paying that they just meh, haven't been bothered to do. So the the uh, defense has been able to show that like, A, they don't have standing. B, they actually don't care about this money because they never bothered to do anything about it in the first place. So uh, it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> Well, if 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 the Supreme Court rules in favor of Missouri on this, then this is truly a lost court. <sighs> Kelly Reed, Dad, it's not much that nobody noticed, but it's more an issue that the upper crust are so far removed from the reality of life that they have an extremely difficult time seeing beyond their own bubbles. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the they make their bubbles and they have no idea. And then they surround themselves with yes men who then tell them everything they want to hear. And so that when it does like come slap down time, uh, they do not see it coming. And they're just like, what? What do you mean I lost the vacation home? Uh, yeah, it'll hit them real, real hard. Kelly Riedel says the stock market is going to continue to climb in the immediate future as hedge funds, institutions, banks continue to pump collateral to unsustainable levels in order to maintain their shorts. Once the asset bubble bursts, the house of cards will come crashing down and catch the bull on the upper crust, unprepared, unaware, then it's billionaires cry on TV time. So one of the problems is that the S&P 500 is that 27.7% of the weight of the S&P 500 is five tech stocks. So there's 495 other stocks in there represent the other 70 something percent 
2.3%. Uh, but over a quarter of the S&P 500 is weighted with just five stocks. And those five stocks are so strong that they're keeping the S&P 500 from collapsing entirely. Uh, the NASDAQ 2000 was also something similar. That's like five stocks or like 80% of the NASDAQ 2000. So, so they're kind of juking the stats. Like the way the S&P 500 should be is each stock is one five hundredth. And you just put 500 of those stocks in there and you weight it that way. But they're not doing it that way anymore. They they are putting their thumb on the scale, artificially inflating the S&P 500. So the SPY should be getting absolutely ravaged right now. But because Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, duh, who else is in there? NVIDIA and... I can't remember. Oh, well, five of them. <laughs> Since they're so strong players, uh, the S&P can't go down because those stocks are so strong. Uh, so maybe it will take crashing a Microsoft or a, or a, an Amazon to really bring the S&P 500 down. I don't know. I don't know how else, how else it, would, it would do it. Google. Thank you. It's probably Google Alphabet, whatever. Thank you, Richard. That's probably, that's probably who it is.